Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. MOTM, Harry's stepdaughter for scholar, coffee for Rolling Stone. Since Madame Vice President Kamala Harris is Jamaican, her stepdaughter turned mother Ella is a distant cousin to Jamaican too. The curly-haired 20-something is fashion molly de jour and has already booked a fashion film for Parenza Scholar and Dust Magazine's issue number 18. So the designers of Proenza Scholar decided to dress Ella, art student, knitwear designer, fled girl and model in a couple of coats plus a pantsuit for her modeling debut in their new collection unveiled by New York Fashion Week. Designers Lazaro Hernandez and Jack McCollum said the fashion world took quickly to notice when 21-year-old Ella appeared at the inauguration in January dressed in a quirky Miu Miu coat with bejeweled shoulders along with a starchy white collar, social media took notice too. Soon after, the designers were planning their February show, actually a digital short for pandemic reason and the casting director mentioned Ella. And we said, we were just talking about Ella. Seemed like everyone was kind of talking about her, Jack said in an interview. As it turns out, Ella, a senior and art major of Parsons School of Design, where Hernandez and Jack met and began their partnership, had just signed with IMG Models, joining an even bigger breakout star of the inauguration poet Amanda Gorman. The outdoor shoot took place recently on a blustery weekend at the Parish Museum in Watermill, New York. It was the first time Ella had walked a runway. I have to say I was a little nervous. Ella said later in a stream talk with the designers, also released on Thursday. I definitely lost a little sleep that night before. I'm walking for the first time. I'm in this professional environment for the first time. The anticipation was really high. She spoke of her love for knitting and textile and the dream of her own knitwear brand. She kind of reminded us of our friends and ourselves in a lot of ways back when we were at Parsons, Jack said. He and Hernandez launched their own brand for their senior thesis collection. For Ella, the designers chose a long grey wolf coat with fluffy embezzlement on the shoulder, then a midnight navy leather trench type coat and finally a black pants suit. Also walking in the virtual runway, show is Meadow Walker, daughter of the late actor Paul Walker. Ella also wears some of the label's typically unique footwear, leather socks topped by a strappy sandals. We very much believe this moment is about the elimination of anything superfluous and the elimination of excess, Hernandez said, explaining the ethos of the collection at the time when fashion itself can feel, well, superfluous. Just reducing things to their most essential basic forms, all the buttons are invisible buttons, the pockets are just internals. Hernandez said, he saw Ella representing this idea of a new beginning, a whole new chapter in American life, in American culture. She's a nice sort of ambassador of the new moment, he said, before moving artfully away from any political implications. You know, via the filter of fashion and art and craft and the world that we all inhabit, she sought the ambassadors of that. Coffee is the rolling stone. The Grammy Kid has been featured in the latest digital issue of Rolling Stone among the women shaping the future, pending by Brandy Spanos. The best part of this production, handled by stylist producer Tamo Ennis, was a Jamaican team that worked in tandem to execute it. The feature provides a breakdown of Coffee's life before and during the pandemic while hinting at her plans for the future and her nonchalant ways of impacting pop culture. Other creatives include photographer Adrian McDonald, hair and makeup artist Michelle Clark, and Flora from Terencia Vernon of Galera Events. It's no secret that Saint International top model Tommy Williams is a fashion darling you know, the girl the industry love who is also often booked and busy. She's recently popped up in a few campaigns, editorials, and fashion flicks as the season picks up and fashion weeks get underway. Then Saint CEO Dwight Peters 
sent a blast announcing Williams' newest campaign for Ralph Lawrence, where the mother owes sultry glam in a bodily clean floral motif dress and fedora. Three murder accused for a court in Trelawney after three other pleaded guilty. Three of the persons accused of involvement in the murder of a Trelawney woman last year are scheduled to reappear in court on Monday, February 22nd, this after three co-accused pleaded guilty to the crime earlier this month. Owen Erling, 33-year-old Tashana Young, and 24-year-old Brian Shelley, all accused of involvement in the murder of 36-year-old Tamara Geddes of Reserve District in the parish are set to reappear in the Trelawney Circuit Court. Nadine Geddes, a Trelawney farmer, pleaded guilty to the murder of her sister Tamara in the same court on Monday, February 8. Nadine's two daughters, one of whom is a minor, also pleaded guilty in relation to their aunt's killing. Sentences are to be handed down on the three family members on Friday, February 26. When the matter was called up two Mondays ago, the court heard that the files for Shelley, Irwin and Young were incomplete and they were remanded in custody until Monday, February 22. Tamara was shot dead in her home by a gunman on Friday, June 19, 2020. Following months of intensive coordinated investigations across Trelawney, St. James, Westmoreland and the corporate area, detectives arrested and laid charges against the sister of the deceased and her two daughters, 21-year-old Shanique Swadok and a 15-year-old, along with Shelley, 23-year-old Rexton Knott, both of Norwood, St. James, and Erwin and Young, both also of St. James' addresses. On Monday, February 8th, not who pleaded not guilty, was released after the prosecution indicated that there was insufficient evidence to proceed any further against him. Reports from the Falmouth police were that on June 19th at about 8.30 p.m., Tamara Geddes was in her room with her daughter when a gunman entered the house, demanded money, and then shot the mother several times. The police were alerted and she was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Her daughter, who was with her at the time of the attack, escaped unhurt. On Tuesday, July 14, Nadine Geddes, along with both her daughters and Owen Erwin, were arrested and later charged in connection with the murder of Tamara Geddes. The other accused persons were subsequently arrested and charged by investigators. Three more COVID-19 deaths, 297 new cases. An additional three COVID-19 related deaths and 297 new cases were recorded across Jamaica on Sunday, according to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The deceased are an 89-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 73-year-old female from St. James, and a 66-year-old female from Westmoreland. The latest fatalities bring the death toll for the coronavirus in Jamaica to 399. The 297 newly confirmed cases bring the total number of cases on record for the island to 21,679. Recoveries increase by 57 on the day, bringing total recoveries to 12,988. Of the newly confirmed cases, 172 are females and 125 are males, with ages ranging from 1 to 101 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 115, St. James 62, St. Catherine 58, Hanover 12, Trelawney 11, St. Anne 10, Westmoreland 8, St. Elizabeth 5, St. Thomas 5, Clarendon 4, St. Mary 3, Portland 3, and Manchester 1. There are 43 moderately ill patients and 18 critically ill patients among the 8,083 active cases now under observation in Jamaica. Over 40 arrests for breaching of DRM Act in St. James. The St. James Police have for the first 16 days in February arrested over 40 persons for allegedly breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act. In addressing a recent forum hosted by the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, MBCCI, and the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Deputy Superintendent of Police Yvonne Powell gave an assurance that the monitoring and enforcement of the Disaster Risk Management Act is being done daily in the parish. 
We are 16 days in February and we have effected more than 40 arrests already for breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Act. We have teams that are dedicated to ensure that the lockdowns take place, Powell stated. She was responding to concerns that public areas need to be monitored and protocols enforced by the police. Powell, who explained that the police cannot be everywhere at any one time, highlighted the challenges that law enforcers face in enforcement, especially in informal communities. Sometimes, even when the illegal parties that you hear people talk about, you hear the noise. You are trying to identify where the sound is coming from, especially in these unstructured communities, and these people are very smart. So, they place the music where the sound comes over into the structured community, and it sounds as if that's where the sound is coming from. But in fact, the music is in one of the unstructured communities, and the police have a very challenging time finding that noise in the darkness, she outlined. She stressed the importance of public education to foster greater conformity to the COVID-19 protocols. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.